Today's World Mental Health Day. I'm joined in studio by psychologist Sekanda Kala. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Okay. It's been reported that one out of three uh, South Africans will have a mental health issue, but 75% of those people will not get treated. Yes. Uh, thank you for having me. I think the big issue is more access to mental health services, but also psychoeducation regarding the necessity for mental health service rendering. I think the big issue is certain individuals don't know what's the warning signs, don't know when they should seek out treatment. And then when they do try and seek out treatment, we have uh, a lack of resources as well in the public and in private settings as well to be able to tackle what's going on in that regard. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a multifaceted issue that's social cultural, that's almost an appraisal of what's happening, but also structural constraints such as funding, allocation of resources for mental health service rendering. Okay, so how, if you're watching, will you know that perhaps there's an issue that you need to seek help for or you need to speak to someone about? Are there certain signs? Signs, yeah, signs and symptoms. I think when I use one of the most common uh, pathologies that we see, such as depression, often people think it's, you know, presents more as just low mood, but they, think they don't kind of miss out on some of the other warning signs. What we often query is stuff like neurovegetative symptoms, sleep, appetite, memory, concentration, excretion, libido, seeing if there's any differences in that, being able to track your day-to-day -day functioning and being able to see, am I, is my appetite reducing? Am I having sleep difficulties? What is happening with my thoughts as well? Are negative thoughts creeping in more often than not? And, and I think it's so multifaceted in the sense that sometimes it's interpersonal issues, sometimes it's familial issues, sometimes it's more structural issues. So I think it needs a multifaceted approach of just how are you doing holistically. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you spoke about access to and the prevention of access to mental health care for people. Yes. What options are there if people cannot go to a private psychologist and, yes. and feel like they need help? because they're displaying these symptoms you've spoken about. I think working in the public sector for quite some time, what I can say is we have very competent practitioners in, the, in public health care facilities. The issue though is just being overburdened. And I think that's more infrastructure and almost post that's kind of seeing very few practitioners to kind of look after a lot of the population. That's one of the barriers, but I think other avenues that can be explored is, you know, organizations such as SADAC, organizations such as Lifeline, that are able to offer more of a lay counseling approach to things and be able to refer you to appropriate individuals at, at the time that's required. Mm. There's often a stigma around mental health and when you're facing mental health challenges, trying to seek help. How does someone get over the psychological barrier of saying, I've, I've got these symptoms, I think I need help, but I, I, I'm too scared to seek help? Yeah. I think stigma is one of the big things that we still need to tackle quite a bit uh, in South Africa, but also globally. I think a big issue is we've now focused on moving away from depression stigma, but we've now also faced issues with bipolar mood disorder and other disorders that are perhaps not very delineated quite clearly. And you hear it in the terminology that people use, saying antisocial instead of asocial. So I think a lot of psychoeducation needs to kick into play. I think even from a basic education perspective, when you think of courses such as life orientation, where the big focus is on more sexual disorders, sexually transmitted infections, but what about mental health? I think we need to start implementing that on a basic education, secondary education level, so that we're more attuned to what needs to come into play there. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be one of the biggest factors that can assist. When we talk about language and, and education, there's also an issue of how we speak about mental health and the words that we use to describe yes. certain things, yes. uh, both good and bad. Could you give us some insight into what's the preferable way to speak about certain issues that certainly, people are facing? Certainly. I think, firstly, we need to make a distinction between the pathology versus the individual. You hear a lot of individuals saying, you're bipolar rather than you're an individual that suffers from bipolar mood disorder. And I think it's, it's small things like that that carry a lot of nuance but ultimately go a long way in perpetuating stigma. Uh, not being able to distinguish that a person has a life outside of their mental illness and we need to harness that. Um, I think, you know, I more recently watched a Joker movie and one of the quotes that came in there that really stuck with me is, people, the worst part about having a mental illness is people expect you to behave as if you don't. And I think that's so powerful that we live in a society in which 
it's so tough for you to break that stigma. It's so tough for you to be able to say, hey, I'm a human at the end of the day. And I think more contact with individuals that have mental illness can almost normalize the experience and people can realize that I can still be a functional member of society. I'm just going through certain difficulties mm -hmm. and I need assistance. When we speak about the society that we stay in, um, South Africa is often described as a very violent place because yeah. of our history, both apartheid and colonialism. And, and when you live in a place that has a lot of violence, inequality, um, and crime, yes. it must do something to your psyche. Yes. Talk yes. to us about that. I think that's one a very important point that you're stressing there. How does the socio-economic aspects, the socio-political aspects intersect with mental health? And we see with the gender-based violence, we see with femicide rates, we see with the xenophobic attacks, all of these things ultimately result in a general sense of anxiety, ultimately result in feeling unsteady, so to say. And I think we need to be able to tackle those social issues as well as inequality, economic deprivation, all these things play a role in perpetuating and almost serving as a catalyst for more mental health issues. Mm. So I think we really need to do more on a social level as well. When we speak about the social level, obviously a lot of people are on social media and there's lots of discussions, both positive and negative, happening around Indeed. mental health on there. What often happens as well is people give solutions for how they've overcome situations that they've been, whether it's by uh, talking about food, outside yes. of counseling, food, yes. um, exercise and the like. Is yes. there a way to deal with mental health challenges that doesn't involve uh, going to a psychologist or doesn't involve seeking help? I think, again, it goes back to the holistic way of appraising your well-being. You know, if you think of mental health, it speaks to psychological, emotional, behavioral, thought-related, and all of these things are influenced by other lifestyle factors. When you think of substances that one uses as perhaps coping mechanisms and what have you, what is the implications of that? When you think of um, how healthy am I living? If you're not functioning optimally physically, it's going to have some impact on your energy, on your motivation, concentration, on your memory. So hence, looking at things like that as well, getting adequate sl sleep, making sure you have a healthy diet, as well as good exercise and healthy interpersonal relationships, I think can go a very long way as well. Thanks so much for your time on SABC you're News tonight. Welcome. Psychologist Sakana Kala joining me in studio there to discuss mental health issues.